Coming up is a 30 minute biceps and shoulders workout with weights. Your upper body will feel the burn in the circuit style workout that'll sculpt and define your arms. All you need is a pair of light or moderate dumbbells. Are you ready? Let's go. All right, let's get started with a warm up. Let's bring those feet nice and wide and we're gonna start with big arm circles. Bring those arms up above the head and around, opening up the chest and just waking up the shoulders right here. Now we have 30 minutes of beautiful, glorious strength training for our biceps and our shoulders. Let's go ahead and reverse. So we have a lot of exercises, a lot of reps coming your way. We're gonna be doing two blocks of work. In each block, four exercises, spending 45 seconds doing each move with a 15 second rest. Let's go ahead, side to side torso rotations. Now, I only have one set of dumbbells. I have 10 pounds, but if you have a variety of weights, maybe fives, tens, 12 and a halfs, or 15s, I think the more weights that you have, the better, because as your body starts to get fatigued, you're gonna wanna drop down your weights. Now, unfortunately, I got a low budget and I gotta add some weights, so I'm going to make sure that in the future, I have some variety. But if you don't have weights like me, feel free to get creative. Grab some water bottles, grab canned goods. You know, during the pandemic, <laughs> I had to get very creative. I was using duffel bags, water gallons, I mean, suitcases, because I didn't have, you know, a gym set up at home. And so I went ahead and got creative. So please just use the things around your house to do this workout if you need to. So just go ahead and open up that chest and you're gonna slap your back, just waking up the shoulders, waking up the chest, getting everything nice and warm. Let's go ahead, bring those thumbs up and you're gonna go ahead and point them down and then point them all the way back behind you. Again, down and then back behind you. So we're just focusing on the rotator cuff and making sure that we find our range of motion in this exercise. Let's go three more, three and two and one. Now let's go ahead from here, find a hip hinge position. So knees are soft, hips come back. You're gonna bring those hands right to the knees. You're gonna reach your hands forward like an eye, biceps come to ears, bring them back down then bring them up to a V. Your thumbs are pointing up, bring them back down, and then bring it out to a T. Thumbs are still up. So we'll keep doing this. Now this exercise is really helping us with our posterior shoulder, so the back part of the shoulder. And this is also gonna help us get set up with proper form for a reverse fly that we're gonna be doing later on in this workout. Now, when we're in this hinge position, make sure your eyes are looking down, your chin is tucked, your neck is part of your vertebrae, so you wanna keep it in alignment. So try your best to not look up towards me or yourself in the mirror. Let's go one more time of doing this all the way through. Again, reaching nice and high, as high as you can. Connecting to your back muscles and your shoulders and rest. All right, so we're gonna get started with our first exercise, which is gonna be a single arm shoulder press. So one dumbbell, one hand is up, your elbow is slightly in front of the shoulder joint. You're gonna press it up overhead, come back down with control. We're here for 45 seconds. So let's get, go ahead and get set up. Feet shoulder distance, three, two, one. Let's go up and down. So block number one is just gonna be focusing on shoulders. The reason why I like to do single arm or single leg stuff is because it forces you to use your core. You have to make sure that you're using your core by pressing your belly button into the spine. Imagine there's a corset wrapped around you and it's holding you up. That's essentially what your core should do. It's protecting your spine making sure that it stays stable. So we don't wanna start leaning over one way, right? We gotta use our core to stand up nice and tall. Now, straighten out this elbow, bring the bicep right next to the ear, come back down, 
and let's try our best to not rest at the bottom. Okay, notice how my elbow continues to stay nice and high. You have three, two, one, and rest. Okay, shake that puppy out. Woo, definitely felt that one. We're gonna go ahead and do that on the other side. So, feet shoulder distance, core tight. Three, two, one, let's go. Bring it up and down. Up and down. Now you wanna keep your shoulders stacked on top of your hips, your hips stacked on top of your knees, your knees stacked on top of your feet. All right? I know it's like, duh, but sometimes people start to do this. <laughs> they start pushing their hips forward and then they start to feel back pain and they wonder why are they getting injured when they're working out, right? So we need to make sure that we are keeping things in alignment. If at any point your form starts to break in any of these exercises, take it as a sign that you need to drop your weights, maybe even do it body weight, because we don't want to make it worse and lift heavier and heavier. Three, two, one, rest with bad form. Grab that dumbbell sister or brother Upright rows, palms facing in, elbow come, elbows come high and wide, bring it back down. Three, two, one, let's go. So now we're focusing on the front of the shoulder. Think of your body like a puppet, and there's a puppeteer up top, and you have a string attached to your elbows. That string is being pulled up, so the elbows are coming high and wide, and the dumbbells land right at about the chest area. Now, what I don't want you to do is start to flip your dumbbells or break your wrists, right? Sometimes people start to break their wrists and then it hurts. So keep your wrists neutral and focus on those elbows coming high and wide and back down with control. Dumbbells are staying nice and clo close to the body here. You have three, two, one, and rest. Next exercise, reverse flies. You can drop down to a lighter weight if you have it or do this body weight. So hinge position, fly the dumbbells out, come back in with control. Three, two, one, let's go. Now, when you're doing this, dumbbells are coming to about shoulder height. Bend the elbows. Think about squeezing the space in between your shoulder blades. Keep your chin tucked, spine nice and long, shoulders back and down, and chest open. Keep the knees nice and soft. Now, if at any point your dumbbells start to get really, really heavy, I want you to go ahead, shake it out, come back in, and do this without any weights. In fact, if your weights are too heavy for you, you might start to compensate and use different muscles that we're actually not targeting, or you'll injure yourself. So make sure to take the contraction out of the neck, put it into the back of the shoulders, and time. Good. All right, shake it all out. We're gonna go ahead, get started from the top again. One more round, single arm shoulder press. Here we go. In, three, two, one, let's go. Bring it up and down. If you have any shoulder issues, go ahead and do a close grip chest uh, shoulder press. It's gonna be a little bit easier on the shoulder joint, okay? Now find that weight that's challenging for you, right? Every interval is about 45 seconds. So the last 15 seconds, we should be struggling to get that weight up, but you should still be able to have good form. Such a great workout to get those beautiful, rounded, sculpted shoulders. And then in the next block, we're gonna go ahead and 
tackle those biceps. You got 10 seconds. Three, two, one, and rest. Woo, okay. Yes, I felt that one. Did you feel that one? I hope you did. I hope you did. All right, let's go ahead, set position, knees soft. We go in three, two, one, go. Bring it up and down. Again, if you did that close grip shoulder press on the other side, make sure that you stay balanced. The heavier the dumbbell, the more core engagement you're gonna feel, right? Because this dumbbell is gonna want to make you lean over to one side. I love strength training days. I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm like, I'm so glad it's not leg day. <laughs> Upper body is where it's at, <laughs> but don't avoid the leg days. You need them, you need them. But leg days obviously are sometimes a lot harder because our legs are bigger. There's a lot more muscle in our lower body. 10 seconds. I actually just did a lower body day yesterday and I am so thankful that we're doing upper body today. And time, good. Coming up, upright row. Speaking of recovery, you do wanna make sure that you are recovering your muscles giving it at least a day, maybe two. Time starts now. To be able to recover and repair itself. If you're doing like a lower body day two times in a row or an upper body day two times in a row, you're not giving yourself that proper recovery and then your results will actually slow down and you won't see the results that you work so hard for. Right? The results happen in the recovery process. It's not actually when you're lifting weights. Here's the science, in case you don't know. When you're lifting heavy weights, you are breaking your muscle fibers down. When you are lifting uncomfortable heavy weight, that's when the muscle breakage comes down. And during the recovery, when you eat your protein, post-workout, when you sleep, when you stretch, when you give your body some time to recover, that's when it starts to rebuild new muscle fibers and time. We're gonna go into your reverse fly. So make sure that you are prioritizing your rest and recovery. It is probably more important than the workout itself. So make sure you do it. Here we go, time starts now. Now for this exercise, you can also do one arm at a time if it's getting too heavy. Now notice if you are hunching your shoulders oh, uh, towards your ears like this, you're getting into the traps, upper, upper neck right here, which we are not trying to get right now. So really relax those shoulders down and use a lighter weight if you feel like you're doing it. Keep it going. Coming up 10 seconds, then we get a one minute break. And time. Good, all right. Grab a sip of water, towel down if you need it, shake it out. We have one minute to just get ourselves ready for block number two. You can go ahead, take some shoulder circles or bring your arms out and in. Stretch everything out. We are moving on to biceps. So the first exercise is alternating bicep curls. So we're gonna start with our dumbbells to our side. Palms are facing in. You're going to flip the dumbbell so that the palm faces up, curl the dumbbell to the shoulder, and then bring it back down. We're gonna go one at a time, which helps us to lift heavier weight, okay? So go ahead, grab your dumbbell. When you focus on one arm, you can put more energy into that arm. Here we go. Feet shoulder distance, soft knees. Three, two, one, let's go. Bring it up and down. 
up and down. Now let's make sure that you are avoiding any swing. So what I do not want to see are hips coming forward, hips coming back, right? Stay strong as a statue. And if you'd like to play around with your stance, you can take a staggered stance. Sometimes I like it. Sometimes I just get tired standing with feet shoulder distance. I don't know about you. I actually prefer it this way. Got about 15 seconds. Now check in with your weight selections. Are we struggling at this point? If we're not, maybe second round, let's go ahead and go a little bit heavier. You have three, two, one, and rest. Coming up, Zotman curl. So now, both weights, palms facing forward. You're gonna have them up to start, flip them on the way down. Here we go, three, two, one, let's go. Bring it up, flip them, slowly bring it down. Again. Nice and easy on your descent. In fact, slowing down on the eccentric or lowering phase of the exercise has been proven to help build more strength. A little fun fact. In my workouts, I always try to give you some kind of inspiration, some kind of fun fact that you can learn more about exercise and how the body works. So if you enjoy that, please let me know in the comments. 15 seconds here. You have three, two, one, and rest. Okay, it's adding up. Uppercut pulses are coming your way. So elbows are off the chest. Your dumbbells are right about chin height. You're gonna go ahead and pulse it, pulse it one arm at a time. Here we go. Three, two, one. Let's go up and up. So now we're getting not only biceps, but we're also getting front of the shoulders. Now when you pulse it, the elbow is staying bent. You're not straightening up all the way. This is also a good opportunity to take a staggered stance. I noticed that I'm starting to arch my back. So this helps me just line everything up again. Fifteen. Woo! Feeling it for sure. You have three, two, one, and rest. Okay, final exercise, bicep 21. So you're gonna do seven bicep curls from bottom to midway, seven bicep curls from midway to top, and then seven all the way down to the top. Here we go, three, two, one, let's go. Now you can count your own reps here if you'd like. So we're just going halfway right here. Once you've done your seven, midway to top. And then bottom to top, full bicep curls. Almost there. You got 10 seconds here. Just start from the very top again. Three, two, one, and time. Woo! All right. We're gonna go ahead and do that from the top of block two, starting with your alternating bicep curls. If you need to adjust your weights, now is the time. Here we go. Three, two, one. Let's go. Alternating. Let's go. 
Let's talk about finding ways to measure progress. So often we just rely on the scale as a measurement of progress, but it's probably one of the worst ways to measure progress, especially if you're on a journey of building muscle. I think one of the best ways to measure progress is by writing down your weight selections and trying to improve it. Getting a heavier weight each time, that is a true indication of strength building, right? Another way to measure progress is through your body composition. If you're trying to look leaner, three, two, one, and time. Get ready for your Zotman curls. If you're trying to look leaner and reduce your body fat, maybe taking a body fat percentage test, it might be better than weighing yourself on the scale. Three, two, one, let's go. What people don't realize about just relying on the scale is that when you build more muscle, it actually is more dense. So if you are on a fitness journey for like a month or 12, right? Your weight might not be changing, but your body composition might be changing. You might be replacing the fat that you have on your body with more muscle. And so your weight might stay exactly the same, but your body shape might look completely different. That I think is one of the biggest mistakes that I made on my journey. When I was just getting started, all I focused on was my body weight. And so what I realized was what I'm really aiming for is to look fitter. Three, two, one, rest. And to look fitter, that meant I wanted to change my body shape. I wanted to look leaner. So that changed the way I approach fitness. Instead of uppercut pulses, instead of time starts now, instead of trying to make myself smaller by doing tons and tons of cardio and reducing my calories to the point where it was like extremely unhealthy, I started focusing instead on building muscle and actually fueling my body correctly, giving it energy so that I can work harder in my workouts. Right, so when, you're, when your focus changes, so do your habits and your behaviors and your choices. And I don't know about you, but it has been a much more enjoyable process to be able to really feed my body what it needs and build it rather than break it down. And that all came from realizing that I'm not actually not trying to just get smaller and smaller and smaller. And that's, if that's your goal, that's okay. That's okay. But my goal was I wanted to feel strong. I wanted to build muscle. I wanted to feel lean and time. Bicep 21s are coming your way. And so that meant doing less cardio because I was doing it like seven days a week and focusing more on strength training. Here we go. Uh, pick up where you left off, three, two, one. So if you were doing your midway to bottom reps, start there. I think having many different ways to measure progress will also make you realize that you are making progress because the scale sometimes isn't our best friend. But you might notice that your jeans are fitting better. You might notice that your energy has improved. You might notice that you can last longer in your workouts. You might notice you're picking up 20 pounds instead of 10, right? Those are all ways to measure progress and I want you to really make sure that you're counting those as wins. 10 seconds. You have three, two, one and rest. All right, one minute break. Shake it out. We have a finisher, four minute finisher to put the icing on the cake. We're gonna do this Tabata style, which means 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. We're gonna be alternating between a push press and bicep platters. So let me show you what a push press is. You're gonna start with your palms facing in. You're gonna load the dumbbells at the shoulders. Small little bend of the knees. You're gonna push it up come right back down with control. Again, push it up, come right back down with control. 
The next move, bicep platters. You're gonna angle them out to a 45 degree with your dumbbells. You're gonna extend that food platter to the gods. Come right back in, okay? Right there. So we're gonna go 20 on, 10 off, alternating. Total of eight rounds coming your way. Get set up for your push press. Here we go. Three, two, one, let's go. I'm using just a small little hop to help me get these dumbbells up overhead, come back down with control. You have three, two, one, rest. Good, shake it out, just hang on to those dumbbells. We're gonna go into your bicep platter. Here we go, three, two, one, let's go. Now depending on how heavy your weights are, you might not be able to straighten out your elbows. And in fact, I don't want you to straighten, straighten them out all the way. Keep just a small bend in the elbows the entire time. You have three, two, one, and rest. Good. All right, round number two. Push press. Three, two, one, let's go. And while you're on your journey, make sure that you're celebrating the doing of it. Three, two, one, and rest. I think a lot of times we wait for us to hit that certain body fat percentage but I want you to celebrate the fact that you're showing up, the consistency, time starts now. When you focus on your process-based goals, right? The working out, the eating clean, the drinking the water, you eventually get to the outcome-based goal, the thing that you want, body fat percentage, weight, whatever. Three, two, one, rest. So it's nice to have like that milestone in the back of your head, that Mount Everest goal. Three, two, one, let's go. But don't let it be your focus. Focus instead on your daily habits. Focus instead on your consistent action. Focus on your discipline. Focus on showing up. Those are the things that actually get you to the top of Mount Everest. And rest, good. We're gonna go into your bicep 20, uh, excuse me, platters. Three, two, one. You got it. Three, two, one, and rest. Woo, okay. One more round of both, and then you're done. Starting with our push press. Three, two, one, let's go. Three, two, one, rest. Okay, last one. Bicep platters. Here we go. Three, two, one. Let's go. Ten seconds. You have three, two, one, and rest. Oh my goodness, shoulders, biceps, everything on fire. How are we feeling? Let me know by liking this video, commenting down below, and let me know how your shoulders feel, how your biceps feel. Maybe give me one word to describe how you are feeling. If you enjoyed this workout and you want to double up, check out this video here. It's a good one. And make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can get notified every single time I post a new workout video. Thank you so much for working out with me. As always, claim your crown.